Welcome in to betting the pitch number two one four i think it is sorry it's been a while don't have the number in front of me but welcome and this is the french league uh podcast for the real underscore g warner on twitter instagram patreon wherever you can find me uh feel free to slide us some dms also if you're on apple Podcasts, leave a five-star review spotify same story uh if you're on youtube please hit subscribe as we're trying to grow this podcast as much as possible as we enter into the 2024 season um i've already completed English Premier League and the La Liga podcast as those seasons start this weekend. Uh, recording this Wednesday, August 9th here in Dallas, Texas in the morning. Um, we're going to go through each of the teams, including the new clubs, the shakeup at, uh, in the league uh, uh, or in France from last season, uh, and then give an ultimate best bet for a future at the end of the show. So stick around for that. Um Let's see. Anything else that I think we're planning to cover today? Uh, there doesn't look like there's going to be a, a pregame.com soccer podcast going forward. So uh, if you're not subscribed here, definitely hit that button, whether whatever podcast version you use or wherever you get your podcasts. Um, I would firmly suggest checking out betting the pitch if you're looking to ride with me, even if you're looking to just get some in, at some some takes, some hot takes, some scalding hot takes, whatever you're looking for. Uh, you're, you've come to the right spot. I also highly recommend checking out my Patreon account, patreon.com. So that's the real underscore G Warner. We can get direct access to me, my leans across all sports, uh, including what's been a pretty good baseball season so far to say the least. And you can interact with me throughout the day as my write-ups are posted. And when I'm locking in each play, turn on notifications, you'll get up to the second updates. And my patrons will tell you that, uh, patrons would tell you that the price is very reasonable, uh, especially if you subscribe to me on other platforms. So check that out. Um, and then I guess we might as well get into it. All lines quoted in this podcast are courtesy of betaline.ag, my favorite place to get my bets down early. Reduced juice is offered on almost every game you want to bet right up until game time. Please follow the link found in the podcast description below to fund your account and use the promo code GW50 to receive a 50% match bonus up to $1,000. Okay, so now we are in the money, hopefully. Uh, so now it's time to get a little bit deeper and I'm going to go team by team starting at the bottom of the league. Uh, with the newly promoted sides or really going by um, the team valuation metric on uh, transfer market. And then uh, we'll go through futures end of show, give out a best bet and uh, get ready for what is already a soccer card coming up this weekend, which I, I think is going to be very important for me to get onto that as quickly as possible. So we'll start with a football club Mets, um, a Recent league uh, team that went down and then came back up. They are the lowest squad value in a pretty poor league compared to the rest of the top five European leagues that I'm covering uh, with season previews. They are worth their squad is only worth 34 and a half million euros, um, which I guess is on pace with some of the other clubs around. So it's not that bad uh, and doesn't look so bad in a French league uh, that doesn't have a solid TV contract. And there are a lot of issues with finances in France at this point, besides retirement age um, riots and things of that nature. Uh, hopefully those are a little bit more under control. Uh, the former football club Mets manager ended up taking over Strasbourg, who's a rival of theirs. So that's interesting. don't know if he's still around there, but we'll get to that team soon. Uh, looks like we have a seven-year-old uh, Romanian, if I can get my flags right, Lajlo Boloni, as the funny last name uh, in American speak. But um, we'll try not to make a joke about that. But uh, he, he's been there since June of 2022. So looks like he took him up and he's sticking around. So let's look at the arrivals. We have Engasan, who's come from Nice over into the Mets side. Um and then a lot of other names I don't recognize. They did lose Bubukar Traore to uh, Wolverhampton Wanderers in um, in the Premier League, uh, which they've had a lot of drama lately. But this is a league uh, podcast. We'll get to that later. Ibrahim Inyane, who had, had went to, I think, Angers last season, uh, looks like he was bought and stuck around or stuck there. And we'll try to be bring Angers back up to league uh, one from League Two or League Two this season. Uh, when I look at the uh, players on on the roster now, Mets were a very aggressive uh, on the front foot, probably a result of Frederic Antonetti, I believe, is their manager and his style. Um, I don't necessarily think that that is going to 
automatically be the same here, though. Um, I do want to look at some of the players on their squad. They, they're historically, uh, as a lot of teams in the league uh, are, are, get players in, um, develop them, and sell them out. I know they have a really strong uh, relationship with Senegal, and like a lot of Senegalese nas- national team players have played for Mets, and I think it's part of why Mets have been or were able to hang in league uh, for as long as they were. Uh, I see a good name like Wagner, who's a good player. Um, when I'm looking through their um, through their roster, uh, Sami Lahseni has been there for a long time. As I mentioned, Engasan who just came in from Nice, uh, but not a big name by any means. Habi Maiga, who's I think been a captain or at least an important player in the defensive midfield alongside Kevin and Um, so there's a lot of familiar names that we've seen before. Matthew Odal, who's I think been around as well. Um, and I really, honestly, I, I loved this squad a, f- a couple seasons ago. They were very aggressive and they covered spreads and were really kind of dissed by the French, uh, Liga marketplace for a long, long time. Alexander Wikija, uh, was a good goalkeeper, um, had an, some injury problems, uh, but was fairly supported by his backup, Marco Aurel Cayar. So, I mean, there's, there's some talent in this team, um, that, and, or excuse me, it looks like a lot of the players have stuck around though. There's a bunch of names that are missing that have moved on to bigger and better things. Clearly, it's going to be a really tough season for Mets as they're the lowest valued club in League. Uh, And I can't imagine there's a ton of changes that we made going down the line as the season starts in just a couple days. Le Havre are the next uh, team. Good luck. Hopefully I pronounced that right. At worth about 10 and a half million euros more than Met mess. And uh, Le Havre, I haven't seen them in League in a while. Um, definitely their Twitter is celebrating coming back into the league. Uh, and then let's look at kind of their setup. Uh, looks like their manager has been around since 2022 as well. He's a younger guy. Uh, looks like Slovenian from Luka Elsner for uh, age 41. Uh, when I look at their top rivals, Kuziaev, who's been a, uh, a Russian national team player for a while. He's a free transfer coming over from Zenit. Um, and then other names, they got a free transfer from Estacqua, who had just gone down really bad. So I don't really say, see too much in that. And then in terms of their departures, it looks like, uh, I mean, they have a free transfer to Atlanta United. So uh, not a lot of has been lost from this La Havre team. Um, they were the champions of League de last season, um, which I, I feel like I've said this before. Uh, so forgive me for repeating myself, but I do like teams that uh, win divisions move up and I feel like they're in the best position after winning a league. It's hard to win a league. Everyone's getting paid different amounts, certainly, but everyone's getting paid to play football at this level um, and to win your league says something. And I feel like that's usually a side I give the best chance to uh, stay in the league, but still going to be tough. I uh, got a long way to go. Only three teams are, are relegated this season compared to four that went down automatically last year. And I think it's going to be back to a, a two teams that are relegated automatically. And the third worst will go into a playoff against the third best finishing team in league, Deux, which is a huge, huge benefit as we see in the Bundesliga where a lot of sides stay up um, in that relegation playoff. So when I look through La Havre, and their uh their roster i don't really know a lot of these names they haven't been at the top level in a while kuziaev is 30 years old coming from russia is an interesting move i'm not really sure why that would happen necessarily because i know the russian players get paid ridiculously large amounts of money um in russia but maybe that uh currency devaluation is a problem considering they're on so many banned lists at this point or whatever but um, potentially some rumors of transfers coming in or, or loan transfers from uh, other clubs throughout France. We'll see what happens and we'll move on now to Clermont Foot, who I have a lot more interest in and uh, ability to talk about. They are worth nearly 50 million euros. Um, a good side that performed really well in Ligue 1 last season, far above their expectations, which those are the sides we want to find and back as long as possible until the market adjusts. It didn't really adjust too much last year. Goals were tough for Clermont Foot, but they ultimately have, I think, stayed in the league two seasons now. We're expected to go down when they first came up, as most promoted sides are. 
Um, but they've been around Pascal Gastien is still around managing the, uh, Clermont foot side since 2017. Um, like I said, not a lot of goals in this team, but they defend fairly well and they seem to, uh, find a ton of penalties at home, which is huge. And that's how you stay in leagues because that's how you win matches. But, uh, when I look at their arrivals, departures, Andy Pelmar coming, I think back to, uh, Liga coming over from Basel, uh, Maximilian Colfres, um, uh, looks like he's coming, I think from Spartak Moscow, uh, something like that. Three and a half million is a pretty big, uh, expense for Clermont Foot to buy a player. Uh, though I want to, f- I feel like he was there last year. Another expense is Abib Keita, uh, 1.2 million from Lyon. Um, it's not small, uh, it's literally any, any million dollar moves in these leagues in the French league, uh, it is something significant. Uh, and unfortunately it speaks to the lack of funds compared to the other leagues across. So when I look at the rest of the club, I mean, plenty of names that you see that were important last season, uh, Kie or, um, ni- number 95 or center forward takes a lot of penalties and makes a lot of them. Also, uh, when I see Andrish, he's a, an important uh, player for uh, maybe a striker off the bench or rotated in that striker position. Um, Maxime Connellons, who's been all around France and was playing for Granada for a while in, in La Liga in Spain. Um, he's on this roster. And then it looks like Colfrey, who they just spent three and a half million dollars on, uh, is a little bit banged up, but should be back in a month or two. So that's it's a little bit of a loss when you're spending uh, your biggest acquisition target and you spent three and a half million euros is is out for a month and a half or at least a month, it seems. So that's that's concerning. Maury Diaz back in goalkeeper, a bunch of nine numbers in the 90s for this squad, I guess. Probably 63 is taken for Clemon full 63, but um, a side that is clearly not valued a ton, but uh, I would put them as is most likely to to exceed expectations uh yet again because uh i believe in the status quo until i'm proven differently sabra team pirates they're up next worth 57 or so million euros um and they are a defensive side that don't get a lot of respect anywhere especially at home home dog all the time it feels um and they are a good squad and they have a lot of ability uh let's check their arrivals and their transfers uh for eric Hua. Their manager who came in in 2023, the second half of last season, and has a contract till 2025, and really, uh, I think, took this team out of relegation fears, and they played well down the stretch. Now, departures, they lost Frank Almorat, who's an important right winger. Uh, he moved on for Borussia Mönchengladbach, which is a pretty big loss for them, unfortunately. Um, he's goal scorer, and they don't have a lot of those. Jean-Kevin Dauvin is a, a left back who played pretty well as a fullback, um, has some pace, and is find his way into a lot of um, the attacking uh, field, I guess. Aris Belkabla had moved along. Uh, Noe Fadiga, who has moved on a free transfer to Ghent. Um, Listen, was a right back here on transfer market. He played a lot of different places. And Yere Uronen, I think, has gone back to, um, I think, uh, I guess now he's playing in Charlotte um, and sold him for $600,000. So um, that's a lot of departures names that I definitely know um, in terms of who's arrived. Martin Satriano, a lone uh, from a center forward from Inter Milan. That's a big name to see. Uh, Madi Kamara, um, who I believe, I mean, it's not the same camera who is at uh who's bought for the Premier League. I can't I can't imagine. Uh no, he's on he's on he left Senatien, uh, who have not been able to return to Liga despite being one of the, the giants in France um after being relegated. But anyway, so he's in three three million. Bradley Loco, who had played at Fairmount, um, he came over from Sad de Rems. Um, and now is in uh, Stade Brestois, which these teams have the same colors and look the same. And they're really hard for me to, to separate. But it seems like there's a lot of big names that have been lost. Um, that's a bit concerning for a squad that's worth fourth least uh, with a $20 million gap to Toulouse above them. Um, that's not great. Um, this is going to be, I, I think, some work for Eric Waugh to do. Steven Mounier has been great. Um, I like the the mixture of a, a player owned by Inter Milan as well, Satriano. Uh, or his rights owned uh, coming into the squad. So uh, alongside Jeremy Le Duran, so there's some big names still around um, and probably they got very much so younger. Mounier, I, I do worry that he might move at some point, but uh, they probably want to keep on to him because there's not a lot more. Matias Perez Lodge is the name that I re- remember. Also, Romain de Castillo. Um, there's still a lot of players there. Pierre Les Moulou, who you 
had seen in the English Premier League as well. Um, Kenny Lala. So there's plenty of good players that are still around. They have lost uh, some talent, to say the least. Uh, Bizo still being around. The Dutchman, uh, our Dutch goalkeeper, who really I thought was a, a, almost a shoe in to win the national team job for the Dutch. But uh, a lot of weird decisions have been made there. Uh, Brendan Chardonnay, the captain, still around. Uh, and then it looks like Christophe Hellerel has, has stayed, which is, I guess he's older later in his career. So um, Stratus has lost a lot. Um, they're not the deepest side out there, um, but they're a team that I think we can, with some continuity from their manager sticking around, it's important. Uh, and it's likely that they will, I think, um, fight relegation probably again, but they will be one of those teams you want to back at home and potentially look to, to fade on the road. I just don't really think they're going to ever really be a favorite away from home. Next, we move to, to Toulouse, who are uh, the French uh, Coupe de France champions and holders of that trophy. I think got a berth into Europa League. It's going to be a big test to see how they are able to balance two uh, really strenuous, important competitions. They were the league de champions from, from two seasons ago. And uh, to my point earlier, performed really well. Um, were pretty safe for a long time. And honestly, I thought deserved a lot better in a lot of their matches that seemed to kind of end poorly at the end, maybe uh, speaking to depth issues or something of that nature. But they're going to have real depth problems playing Thursdays and late Sundays because there's no Monday night matches in France. Uh, at least there weren't last year. So they're going to have some big tests and there's probably a side I'd like to go against as they're worth 75.4 million euros, according to transfer market. Um, definitely a stronger side than they had last year. And um, I think a lot more belief in them to stay up, but balance the two, top two competitions is going to be very difficult, especially for a side that plays on the front foot and is very, very attacking. Um, they do have a new manager as well. Carlos Martinez appointed, uh, just in July. Um, so that's a, a new thing as well. Kind of weird to see previous manager move along, but I want to say he went back to, uh, countries from, um, when you look at transfers, Bronco van der Boomen, who is an important central midfielder has moved back to Ajax. Uh, that's a big loss as well as Spearings in the domestic midfield. Um, that's a lot of questions there for me. Um, I seem to pay their goalkeeper gone. Um, uh, I'm surprised by a lot of those moves, honestly. Um, but I would hope that they are, uh, because they're improving th things, uh, in terms of what they brought in Christian Caceres from Red Bull, uh, some New York, maybe not, 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 I am not a believer in the MLS, so I don't love how those things for things. They spent $3 million on a left winger, two and a half on Niklas Schmidt, who you, you might know from Voto Bremen, um, not to me the best player out there, but definitely the name I've seen. Uh, and that's the only one on this list is Frank Magri. I don't know uh, who's coming in from Bastia, uh, which uh, I think is in Italy, but he was $2 million. So they spent some money, two, two and a half, three million, one million euros, but uh, they lost a lot, uh, especially in that midfield. Um, I don't know really how much they've done to change that. So uh, let's put Toulouse on the danger list. Um, I'm not exactly sure how Carlos Martinez is going to play. Um, let's check his background. A lot, love doing this live on a podcast, but I do feel like it's something important. The Spanish uh, manager from Barcelona um, was previously an assistant at Toulouse, so it might be the same same style. Uh, formerly uh, Espanol youth coach and then coached the Kuwait national team youth. Uh, so we'll see. I, I, I guess I'll guess that they're playing the same way that the previous manager played, which is very aggressive front footed. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Uh, when I look at the rest of the roster, Dalinga is still there center forward, uh, Zakaria Abuklal, who's really came on the scene in Liga was fairly good for Morocco in the world cup. Um, we'll see if he sticks around worth 9 million, uh, euros at this point, definitely on the list as well as Khaibi. Uh, or Chaibi, uh, the Algerian, who's really good player. There's a lot of young attacking talent, which probably makes sense to why they played the way they did. But Niklas Schmidt coming in from Voto Bremen is interesting. 25 years old. Um, we'll see what he ends up becoming. Like, because I would imagine they from losing, I, I guess Braga van der Munen and the other defensive midfielder they lost were were both uh, playing in that kind of spot. Uh, Nicholas Schmidt never to me seemed like a defensive player as much. Uh, they did spend two and a half million dollars for him though. So it seems, seems like there, there's something behind that idea or they have some theory behind it. 
Um, Nikolaisen, who's still in there at center back, uh, as well as Anthony Rualt, that t- tells me that the uh, the center back kind of party is still together. Um, but there's a lot of young goalkeepers here, all valued less than 400,000 uh, euros. That is concerning to me as well. Um, Toulouse are definitely on my list of uh, teams that could have some trouble. Next, we'll move to football club Nantes. Uh, Nantes, one of the most famous clubs. They went through the same sort of story that Toulouse did or the Toulouse will do um, when Nantes won the Coupe de France, played in the Europa League, somehow made it uh, through the group stages and literally fought and hung on for dear life, I think, to the last day to avoid getting um, relegated. And that was because uh, their rival, Ajaccio, or no, not Ajaccio, Alger, uh, they, I think, had a worse result on the last day. So not a lot kept Nolte up. Um, things were going really horribly. They're a really easy fade for a long time. They're worth a little more than 77 million euros, a little a couple of million more than Toulouse. Um, but that's not a huge number. And they to me seem like a squad that ever since they lost Rendell Colomani, um, they really took a step back offensively. Paris Astua appointed end of May, saved the squad, so he stuck around. I don't know necessarily that he's the guy you want there, um, but it is what it is, I guess. Uh, they had a big win against Angers, the bottom side, who had been the worst team in French League uh, to stay up last season. Fortunate scheduling the last, uh, last, last week, I guess. Uh, so when I look at departures, uh, Ludovic Blas, huge loss. Um, didn't have a great season last year, but was one of the more, more attacking players and more talented. He's moved on to Stade Rene. Uh, and that is not great because he's going to then punish them in this league, it seems. Andy Delore gone, but he's pretty old. Uh, Andre Girotto, an important part of their center back, and really their spine is what made Nolte so good and really made them a great bet on their re- way to winning uh, the Coupe de France and were a decent bet in Europe because they really had a great center backs uh, and then also central midfielders and defensive midfielders kind of in that spine, as they call it. Um, now they don't have an important part of that. They've also lost Sebastian Kosia, who's a, a right back. Not really. I think he's probably replaceable. There's a lot of fullbacks that they're rotating. Um, but I'm interested to see kind of what they've brought in. Mustafa Mohamed, who had been in the team. Uh, he's, I guess, made a permanent move from Galatasaray. Uh, Ronald Pierre Gabriel has come over from Mainz. Um, I don't know that he's going to move the needle too much. And unfortunately, a lot of these problems with French clubs, they don't have a ton of money, even playing in Europa League. Uh, we saw them lose Rondo Colomani when his contract came up. And then really a team that just didn't score goals. Uh, when I look at the squad, so Mohamed played pretty well, uh, the Egyptian late in the season. I imagine he'll be fighting with Ganago for uh, starting positions at center forward. Marcus Coco is also there with Moses Simon. Um, and uh, Florent Mollet, who had come in after moving to Schalke in Germany and then came back mid-season. Musa Sokol was an important acquisition for, I thought, balance and more defensive midfielders to then use in their uh, Europa League run. Um, I don't know necessarily what his story, if he will eventually, at 33 years old, will move to center back. Um, there's some depth there with Kiravella as well as Mutusami. Um, to both listed as captain, which is interesting. I don't think that's going to be forever. Uh, Fabien Santons, who'd formerly have Mets and other, I think maybe a Strasbourg as well. Um, he's a good right back, good creator, creative fullback, and they're going to need a lot, as much as they can to, to create goals um, this season, especially with the loss of Ludovic Blas. Um, Nicolo Palawa, great defender, as well as Castelletto. So, I mean, to me, it's unfortunate they lost Giroto, but... Uh, they do have a, some depth in that in that spine, and now they get to actually use it in a way where they're not having to use it twice a week, Thursday and Sunday. They can only focus on their single match each week, and that probably will be a big boost to Nolt in staying in the league. Uh, Alvin Lafont, their awesome keeper, worth 16 million euro. They're holding on to him for dear life, it feels like. So we'll see what happens next there. Uh, next, we'll climb up to Football Club Lorient. Uh, they are worth nearly a hundred million euros, which is uh, surprisingly high. Um, looks like they've done some investment to say the least. Um, I don't think that they're in multiple competitions, but uh, let's check that just to make sure. Um, let's see. Uh, they are in the Europa league. Yes. Okay. There we go. Um, 
So that is a big step. No wonder they've spent some money. Um, and well, I mean, that's that's a really interesting spot because they have not, I mean, they've had a ton of talent selling Yohan Visa to uh, Brentford, for example. Um, I don't know how that's going to go necessarily, but um, certainly they've added to the squad because they're usually one of the uh, lowest values. They've re-upped with their manager, Regis Lebris, uh, or Lebris, uh, contract expires now in 2027. It's a long time, to say the least. It's got appointed the end of 2022 season. Um, and then when you look at departures, so they had sold Mofi already in the January transfer window to Nice. They also sold Enzo Lefay, uh to the Stade Rene, who just keep buying awesome players in France, uh, the Bayern uh, tactic, it seems. Morciens had left for Schalke, and then looks like when they got relegated, got then moved on to Wolfsburg. So those are three pretty big losses, um, though one was in January. Morciens, I don't think, ever played because I think he was at Celtic before, uh, but Enzo Lefe is a big loss. Uh, arrivals, they brought in Roman Favre, which, uh, Favre, which is a, a good addition and then some of these other names I don't know, but I do trust the recruitment of L'Oreal. It's been awesome lately. When I look at their squad, uh, they have uh, Gerbich is a name I know, but usually goalkeeper, so I don't know him. Uh, Ibrahim Okone had a good year last year, only 24 years old. Bamba Diang, he's been moving around quite a bit. I want to say it was at uh, Marseille for a while, uh, amongst other places. Yeah, he was. Um, and now has landed at Lorient, probably on loan. So that's interesting. Or was purchased and it doesn't get carried over to transfer market. Shame on them. Um, but when I look at the rest, uh, Ali Oshiche is a great player uh, in that Nault, or excuse me, in the um, Senatien system. Uh, Taylor Lebrace, uh, the, I think, nephew of the manager. Uh, Favre, as I mentioned, um, there's there's some good players. Boca Innocent, who I think came over from Russia, the Nigerian is a good player. Long to Abagel is their leader, captain, defensive midfielder, takes really bad red cards late in games and kills me. But um, there's still a lot of the good players that are still around. Uh, Julian Laporte in the, in the center back position, not the Laporte you're thinking, Amarek from, uh, I guess, Manchester City at this point. Talby as well, I like. And then Mvogo. Uh, who's been on, I think was on loan from uh, Leipzig and then was, I guess, bought uh, as well as Vito Manone, who's another good player, but at 35 years old, uh, we'll see how that kind of gets all split up and who becomes a club goalkeeper. A um, lot has been, they've made a lot of more money back. They've sold a lot of players. Bringing five Favre is a very nice addition, but uh, this is going to be a big test of a season for Lorient with two competitions in the same type of world as Toulouse. Now we'll move to Stade Rems, who are from the Champagne region. Uh, your wife, girlfriend, partner, whatever might know a little bit more about this than you do. But uh, at least when you see something, you can say uh, you know about the Champagne region. And people are like, why? And you say it's because I bet French football, listen to Real Energy Warner's tw Twitter podcast or whatever. Um, maybe that helps. I don't know. We'll see. Um, we're slightly below 100 million euros. Our uh, our REMs and they had an incredible year last year appointed will um, will still no, am I thinking of yeah will still came in 30 years old Belgian um, and they were paying a 20 year 20,000 euro fine because he wasn't fully caught up in his books or registered as a manager but he was awesome they had a huge run when he came in and really REMs were aside two seasons ago that were so good to me financially uh, Oscar Garcia was the manager there, formerly of Celta de Vigo, and they had a really bad start to the season. I don't really think it was his fault because they sold so many pieces. Uh, but then once they got back to it, they started playing well again. And now we'll see what happens to their squad. Uh, Hugo Ekatike has moved back, I think, to Paris Saint-Germain for $29 million or so. Dion Lopi gone to Almeria. Uh, Andre Gravillon is a fairly big loss, formerly a, a, a loanee for me to Milan. Uh, he's moved, it looks like, to Turkey, which is interesting. Brady Loco, as I already mentioned, to Sabrestois. Um, those are some losses as well as Elan Cabal to Paris um, Football Club, not Paris Saint-Germain, different, different squads. Uh, but they brought in Joseph Akumu, center back from Ghent, for $12 million. That's a pretty big expense there. Teddy Tuma, I don't know that name from Union Saint-Germain, but they are a good side from Belgium, probably has some sort of background with uh, Will Still. Also, Amin Salama, $4 million from uh, Angers. Don't really know that name very well, but that's a pretty big price. Uh, Reda Kadra coming in from uh, 
from Brighton and then Omar Diakite from Red Bull of one of the types uh, for two and a half million. So they spent a lot of money, uh, pretty much everything from Ekatike they, they spent uh, in a lot of different ways, which is probably a good thing because um, really, I think at this level, it's about um, squad depth. And when I look at the squad, I mean, Junya Ito is so good, the Japanese uh, right winger. Uh, Mitchell Van Bergen was good. Uh, Alexis Flips is good. I mean, a lot of these players are still around, which is important. Uh, Valon Berisha was pretty good in the kind of midfield position. Um, that's important. And then they've clearly spent a lot of money on their kind of their spine with their center backs, center midfield, and center forwards all at $4 million or higher. Um, I, I think there's some belief that this will turn into a, a club that uh, will compete for Europe potentially. Uh, I see Diouf, their goalkeeper is still there. Um, and this was a really great club a couple seasons ago. So I don't really see why that wouldn't happen, especially with a lot of the, the personnel still in place. Next, we move to Montpellier, finally above the 100 million euro uh, valuation mark up to almost 120. Montpellier with a great run end of the season. Uh, we'll see if their manager is sticking around. I imagine he should be. Uh, and that is Michel de Zacharin, the Armenian, who really had kind of not done great. I think at Rems took over at the other uh, at Montpellier and things went great. Um, and they're basically a team that never played any defense, but it could always score goals. And then all of a sudden with the Zacharian, they're playing a lot better defense and the goals are still coming. So they basically climbed up the table, started playing really well. Uh, I'm interested to see if they can keep that going. They did sell Stephi Mavadidi to the uh, English championship favorite, uh, Leicester City. Um, he was already out there causing some problems in the opener last weekend. Uh, got 7.5 million euros for him, but that's a fairly large loss. They also lost Vele Hamen, to, uh, who's a, a probably a backup striker, but not a huge name to me. Uh, brought in a center forward for four and a half million. Also for Lysako, who seems to be all over the place, uh, right back for 1.3 million. Uh, and then it looks like everyone else is free or at a very low cost. So uh, not a ton of money was spent here. Wabi Kazri is still around. Uh, good goal scorer, potentially at 32, maybe someone off the bench. Eli Wahi, great goal scorer at 20, worth $35 million. Would or Euros, would, wouldn't be shocked if he has moved at some point. Arnaud Odin is a good player as well. There's a lot of attacking talent, plus Teji Savanier, who I think would captain this club, but also captain the uh, French Olympic team. Uh, I think it played for the, the big club as well, or the senior team. But um, Jordan Ferry, also a good player. I mean, there's a lot up front in, in, in this midfield and attack that are really talented from Montpellier. I think the question will always be about their goals. Uh, prevention, I guess, is a better way to say it. Mamadou Sako was just a disaster in the Premier League. Uh, it's kind of been a disaster in uh, French League on as well. Um, don't really want to see him playing too much. 33 years old. Hopefully he's playing less uh, rather than more. Christopher Julien is a name that was starting a fair amount, as was Maxime Esteve. Um, both important players, as well as uh, Lacombe, who had come back from uh, a, a move to Spain has come back to, to France after playing previously at Monaco, uh, kind of losing his job. And we did he really deserve it? I'm not sure. And then he'll probably battle with Dimitri Bartol for uh goalkeeping positions, but um, there's a little bit of depth there. I, I like the squad. I feel like they're always good attacking and scoring goals. Is the most important thing to staying in leagues. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, and now I'll move up to Strasbourg. I'll chasse or Racing Strasbourg. Uh, Strasbourg on the border of Western uh, Germany. Um, they, I think, have a partnership or are also owned by the Chelsea owners. So there is some sort of combination there uh, using uh, Strasbourg and a pretty big cr crowd fan base as a uh, minor league team, you could probably call it. Um, but when I look at Strasbourg, they uh, moved on from the previous manager, Frederick Antonetti, I believe, uh, to Patrick Vieira. He's landed, I guess, did not want or was not really a true consideration for the U.S. men's national team job, but got fired and, and didn't really have a good run at Crystal Palace. Uh, also was pretty quickly fired at Nice as well a couple of seasons ago. So we'll see how he does. Um, certainly a lot of pressure on him, but he's got a three-year deal. So that's a long time, um, or maybe even four uh, departures. Alexander Jiku was one of their captains and played pretty highly important football. I think for Cameroon or Ghana, uh, he's an awful red card waiting to happen. So that's a great loss. 
Maxime Le Marchand, uh, center back, also uh, retired. So there's two center backs gone. Uh, doesn't seem like a lot of the other losses were meaningful. They brought in a center back from uh, looks like uh, Bruges, I want to say. Yes, Club Brugge uh, for 20 million euros. That's huge money for Strasbourg. Um Abakar Sila, who had started a lot and was part of that championship run or, or excuse me, Champions League run. Uh, they also brought in a $13 million center forward uh, from Sassoon Graz in Austria. Wow. Uh, they got a loanee from, from Chelsea, right winger. They also spent $10 million on Bakla, left winger, and another center back, Junior Mvanga, uh, both from Bordeaux. Uh, wow. So they have splashed a ton of cash. I mean, what a surprise Chelsea owners, I think, or that relationship, if I'm not mistaken, just throwing a ton of money out there. Um, I don't trust them at all. Uh, cause they were so bad at Chelsea last year and, uh, I'm still planning to bet against Chelsea until, uh, things change, but Abdi Diallo was a great, uh, goal scorer for him, formerly of FC Mets, uh, football club Mets in a uh, big Derby out there in Eastern France. Um, He's going to need to score a bunch of goals. Kevin Gamero behind him is 36 years old. Got to expect that to slow down quite a bit. Uh, when I look at uh, Persich, is still there in midfield at 29. Belagod at 25. Maybe uh, takes a little bit of that responsibility. Um, there's a lot of names here, but a lot of a lot of high 20s. Um, not a lot of youth here uh, in this, this squad, uh, including Delane and... Luis Perrin is 24, I guess, so to get a little bit younger in center back position. So it's almost like they've gotten a lot younger uh, and spent a lot of money. We got Sila for 20, at 20 years old, um, Ducore, 20 center backs, uh, I'm listing off as well, Vanga at 20. So those are helpful. Matt Sells definitely makes a lot of mistakes for a Belgian, like number two or three goalkeeper. Um, but I guess offer some stability back there. Um, I'm I'm not sold on Strasbourg. I got to say just splashing cash really hasn't done much, though. It does certainly help with how much cash they've had to splash. Um, next, we'll move to Racing Club Lens. Uh, they were worth nearly 160 million euros, and they are going to be battling a lot of uh, competitions this year as they were finished second outright all alone, uh, did a really good job of climbing away from Marseille, forcing Marseille into the uh, playoff for Champions League. And uh, now they get to balance. And it's I think it's a lot easier to play Champions League than it is to play Europa League or Europa Conference League in terms of rest. Um, but you are playing the best squads in the world and that might go really poorly because as soon as momentum is broken and things start going poorly, it could go really bad for Frank Heiss uh, and his squad. He's got a contract till 2027, probably a good idea to keep him around considering how well they've unperformed. He's a, an aggressive manager. They're going to be on the front foot. Um, they sold Luis Openda for 43 million euros to Leipzig. Uh, they also sold Seko Fofana, who's I think the most instrumental player in their club history. Uh, I think he went to uh, Saudi Arabia for 25 million euros. Jen Onana uh, has left for Besiktas at 4 million. I don't really know why he, that seems like a, a big price. And so maybe they cashed in there. Um, and then in terms of arrivals, they brought in Diouf, uh, the best scorer, I believe at Basel uh, at central midfielder, excuse me, uh, Angelo Fulgini, who came back, uh, I think was previous at Angers, moved to Metz, came back for 7.2 million Spearings. Uh, they picked off as a defensive midfielder from Toulouse. So that's important to grab within the, um, within the, the league. Uh, but uh, we'll see how he performs on Champions League level. Uh, that's going to be a big question. Sotoka at 32 years old is pretty old. Um, and so that is unfortunately speaking to a very old front line uh, with a lot of names that I don't really even understand. Maybe they have a striker coming in, um, but that doesn't look great to me, uh, especially with the loss of so Seiko Fofana, who is such an important goal scorer, goal contributor out of the midfield. Um I don't know, Frankowski, uh, right midfielder, or to me, it's a fullback. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the squad. It does not seem very strong to me, unfortunately. And I already had questions about how they would handle a Champions League schedule. Uh, the, the, I guess the, the defense is pretty similar to what um, it was last year with Machado. Uh, I think he's Colombian. Uh, then we have Gradit, also Medina. Danso, um, the last two Medina and Danso both worth 22 million 
uh, euros according to transfer market. Also, Brisambo had a really good year in the championship, I believe. Uh, plus, they have Farinez, uh, Venezuelan, and also uh, John Luis Leca, who you don't want to play at all, but I guess is there for uh, some leadership at 37 years old. Um, I got some big questions about Lowell's and I'm very worried about them coming in and I feel like they could be a really good fade going into the season. Next, we'll move to Lille worth just over 200 million got into, I think the Europa conference league, um, after, uh, Stad Rene, uh, let's see, Paulo Fonseca still around, very aggressive offensive manager contract through the end of this season. Uh, so it's probably put up or shut up time. Thought he might move somewhere else, especially without getting a Champions League place or a Europa League place, but he's still around for now. Uh, departures, Bomba left on a free transfer to sell to DeVigo. Um, a loss, but not the biggest. I think Timothy Wea on his move to Juventus is a huge loss for him, unfortunately. Jose Font has gone back to Portugal at like 38 or 39 years old to Braga. I don't think that that's a huge loss though. Leadership and things of that nature. Cause he was playing a lot last year until he got injured. Uh, they brought in Haraldson from FC Copenhagen. Um, 15 million euros. It's pretty big expenditure for Lille. Um, more than they sold Timothy way for Thiago Santos. Who's come in from a, a club. I don't recognize is right back uh, for six and a half million. Also pretty big expense there. Um, TT uh, came out, I guess, finished his contract with Lecce and has come as a free transfer. So that's important. Um, other names I don't really know. Uh, Adam Unas is a good player. Jonathan David. David uh, was a good penalty kick taker and score. I don't really believe in him. Somehow he's worth 60 million. I would cash in on that if I were them. But Mohamed Bayo, who's a great striker that hasn't really played much since moving to Lille. Uh, I do expect a lot more from him this season. Uh, Remy Cabela is still around. You got Harlson on that big price tag at 20 years old. Yazici has come back from Turkey, I believe. Um Benjamin Andre, 33 years old, but is an important kind of leader in the midfield. Uh, Santos, they just spent a lot of money on 21-year-old Portuguese. Uh, and then when I look further up, Goodman sends around. MTT's certainly got the experience and has finally looked a little bit more healthy. Uh, Tiago Jalo, he's got an injury, little designation next to him. Oh, cruciate ligament. That's a long time out. So that's unfortunate. And then they have one of the better, I think, a French under 19 and under 21 goalkeeper Lucas Chevalier, who's basically stolen that job. Um, so there's a lot of, I think, talent there, as well as Alexandro, 24-year-old Brazilian center back. So this is a good squad. Uh, I, I like Lille. They were really good last year. Um, had a lot of late victories, but I uh, decided not to hold that against them. Next, we'll move to, to Nice. Uh, Lille had just climbed over 200 million euros, if I didn't say that. Nice at two and a quarter million, or 200 and a quarter million, so 224 and change. Um Big number for Nice, considering they have not delivered. Uh, they were so bad under their first manager last year, uh, Lucien Favre, but he's always been awful. They have Francesco Farioli, 34 years old. Uh, I could be managing this team, basically. Uh, just came in to start the year. Uh, and there's been some money, certainly, in uh, the Nice coffers. Um, have they spent it very well? I'm not sure. Uh, departures, they lost Calvin Stangs. Uh, to Feyenoord for six million, Caspel Dolborg, who just hasn't been able to latch on anywhere and was on loan to Sevilla of, of all clubs last year. Um, Andy Delora will not count. Uh, they did bring in Termofi in January last year. Also, Jeremy Boga, 18 million euros, and Morgan Sanson, who's come back from on loan from uh, Aston Villa. So those are three pretty big attacking additions that they made. Um, they spent a lot of money. We'll see how that turns out. Um, I don't know necessarily that, I mean, it certainly will help their offense, the acquisitions they made, but that was a big problem from last year. So we'll see if that changes. Mofi should be good and should be a lot more settled. Laborde off the bench could be pretty good as well as Gasson as well at 22 years old. Um, when I look up, Jeremy Boga is a great player. Atalanta does just turns out awesome talent. Sofian Diop, who'd moved from Monaco, I believe to Nice, uh, is a good player as well. Um, worth 15 million euros. So there's some some values there. Sanson is certainly a veteran coming in at 28, not too old. Isham Baudouai, uh, Boudouai, um, Algerian, sorry, not haven't been there. Hard for me to pronounce. Also, they have a younger Turam who's around worth 40 million euros. So, I mean, there's some some talent alongside Becca Becca as well, who will be big talent at one point. Pablo Rosario has been pretty good. I mean, this is a really good team of big names. Dante. 
Their uh, 39-year-old captain is still center back on this squad. Well, hopefully he doesn't play too much, but Jean-Claire Toribo, I think had come from Barcelona, has been huge at center back. Um, they, I think, had Saliba before. Uh, I could be mistaken on that one, but um, they're a little bit weaker in this center back and defensive areas, and that's a question for me. Uh, they clearly have gone the other way and tried to add a lot more attackers like most of the big clubs throughout the world with a lot of, a lot of money it's seen it done. Um, Castro Michael, a goalkeeper, definitely is not my favorite, but um, at 36 years old, still worth $2 million, should probably play to that level, and is, I think, at least someone that we can trust um, in uh, a goalkeeping position. Um, I don't think that Nice have uh, Europe to worry about, so um, that is pretty nice to have one focus this year, and I'll move up uh, 241 million euros, that's Olympique Lyonnais. Um, formerly one of the biggest clubs in France have not really performed at that level in a while. Uh, they have Laurent Bloch who came in, um, early last season and stuck around. Uh, I guess they were playing a lot better with them, but I, I'm not sure I'm a huge believer in that. Uh, Roman Favre has gone, um, to Bournemouth as a purchase, but then on loan, uh, as we already mentioned, I think to Lorient or whoever it was, uh, Ushama Awa has left for Roma free transfer. That's a huge loss because he was going to go for like $80 million to Arsenal a few years ago. Moussa Dembele has left, but um, he was getting older and never seemed to be able to grasp the playing time. They'd sent him on loan. Schenk Azokar uh, is at Valencia, but it was gone and was playing there last season. Tiago Mendes is another kind of fairly big loss. I think he went to somewhere in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Al Rayan, uh, wherever that is, but um, that's a fairly decent loss. But none of these are huge, huge names. They have so much talent. They've brought in from Southampton on loan, Duje Chalatashar, formerly of Marseille. Um, not a great player, in my humble opinion, but uh, did play a fair amount for the Croatian national team. Uh, Ainsley Mate Niles, who's been on loan everywhere, it seems, uh, left Arsenal on a free transfer. See how he does in in France, but clearly has some talent and was playing for Arsenal at times. Um, don't really recognize a lot of these other entries, so it feels like they've been a little bit cheaper uh, in terms of compared to their expenses. Lacazette was awesome last year, but 32 years old now. We'll see how that does. Tino Caraguere, great player as well. Um, he went on loan and then came back. Good player. Um, hopefully should have a little bit more. Uh, Carl Toko Akambi was also on loan last year. I mean, it's amazing how many moves were made with, with Lione, uh, considering how talented they are. But Jeff Renatale is back. Ryan Cherokee, great player, has a big future at 19. Uh, probably one of the players they need to protect the most. Maitland Niles, as we already said, 25 years old. Tuliso, Mosin Kakare, who's really emerged that defensive midfielder that they really need. Le Penant seems like a, a big name potentially for the future. They've got a ton of young players, ton of young talent. Tylee Afiko is a weird 30 year old move last year. Also, they brought in Dijon Lovren to try to improve a defense that was so struggling so much. Um, maybe he and the, his, his countrymen, uh, Chalette Shar should be a little bit help more helpful in the back. Uh, Diamande is a good player. Castel Luqueba, 25 million in value is definitely a lot of, um, uh, rumors about him moving, but we'll see what happens potentially a premier league club. Looks like Anthony Lopez is, is hurt at the moment or Lopes. We'll see if he, uh, how much time he misses. I mean, there's so much talent in Lyon, but they haven't delivered on it in a long time. I don't know that's a year to expect it to happen all of a sudden now, um, but there certainly is the basis there. And as an underdog, which they really weren't a lot of last season, I'd be interested in them, probably not as much in a favor until they prove it. Moving up now to Monaco at 288 million euros. Um, they had a really disappointing year last year and I think missed out on, on Europe, which is a big, big deal for them financially. And I expected they had to make a lot of sales. Adi Huta has come in, former manager of Frankfurt in the Bundesliga, as well as I think uh, Borussia Mönchengladbach. That did not go very well. I don't know necessarily that it was his fault. I think coming in at the wrong time uh, was pretty bad. Uh, Monaco, not a terrible landing spot, just got appointed. Um, I don't think necessarily he's going to play that odd attacking style. Philippe Clement had been pretty good before, but I guess not making Europe is a, is a fireable offense. Uh, they've sold XLD Sassi for 45 million euros to Chelsea. Uh, that probably was needed to balance the books. Also, Jean Lucas, Jean, Jean, Jean Lucas, Jean, Lu, Jean Lucas, whatever, 6 million euros. He's gone. Um, and then that's so 51 million from two players, not a lot more. They brought in Mohamed Sali Sue for 15 million from Southampton. 
Uh, he's a good player, young, but uh, I think will look better in, a, in an easier league. Also brought in Philip Kohn, uh, the goalkeeper from uh, Red Bull Salzburg, I believe, for $10 million. Looks like he'll be the starter now that Nubel is gone. Um, and, I mean, not a ton. of. Usually they're bringing in players because they're also always seemingly in the Champions League uh, playoff. Didn't really happen here. Uh, we'll see how that all goes. But uh, Maron Boadu is great talent at 22 center forward but plenty left there to wonder about with somebody there their captain goal put in a ton of goals last season if monaco are un- undervalued i think there's some value in potentially backing them a lot this year braille on below i think just ripped his cruciate ligament so he's done for a while kevin volan is still there volan is, is a great player i mean there's so many goals in this team minamino is talented ali akliushe has had such a great debut akliush uh, last season when he came in, Carpe de Yataz, great player, especially in FIFA. If you played out with him, he becomes one of the best out there. Ben Seguir had won a bunch of matches uh, off the bench. Goal event. I mean, there's so many good players uh, in this squad. I guess there's some questions when they sold so many center backs recently, what that's going to look like in their defense. And that's probably a rightful question, I think, especially last year for how many red cards they seem to take. Majeki, um, the pole goalkeeper should be a backup, I think, to clone. Um, but they're they've got some depth there. So Lisu coming in is huge. Mari Pons, good, good center back, 29-year-old Chilean. Uh Matsimaz, I, I reckon my eyes, Kyle Enrique, got to keep him healthy. He's really important on that left back position. Is Ismail Jacobs doesn't really do much for me, but Venderson on the right back he plays pretty offensively. I mean, there's there's still a lot of talent here. Uh, maybe has not money as much not as much money to invest uh in this in this squad this year. But Adi Hutter I also like as a manager. So um I, I kind of like the the buildup for Monaco coming into the year. Monaco uh, then above them in market value over 300 million euros now is Olympique Marseille. Um, they are certainly talented, but very rarely do they live up to expectations. Marcelino has come in, uh Spanish manager who had been all over the place. Um, I, Marseille, pretty, pretty much, they just chew up and spit out managers, uh, coming off a loss to Ajaccio in their last match of the season. I don't know if they had a chance at getting second position to avoid the, uh, Champions League playoff. So it might've been one of those games they didn't care about, certainly go, didn't go into it very well. Uh, departure, they lost Milik, uh, but he was already gone at Juventus. Luis Suarez was already gone at Almeria, said Kolesinac. Kolasinac is not meaningful to me. Uh, played a little bit at left back and scored a, a few goals, but Radonjic was already gone to Torino. So really has, haven't lost a lot besides Alex Sanchez not coming back. Um, and it looks like he's without a club. So he might come back. We'll see. Uh, arrivals, Renan Lodi, 13 million they spent. Uh, left back from Atletico Madrid. Esmail Asar is probably the biggest grab, I think, at 13 million euros from Watford. Uh, rumored to be going everywhere for so long. And then finally does. Uh, they kept Malinovsky, which is good. They brought in Kondogbia, also from Atletico Madrid. And then Iliman and Jai, I don't know, from Sheffield United, a center forward. So they put out a lot of money, uh, certainly spent a lot, did not bring much in. Um, so they're going for it. They're in Champions League playoffs. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and unfortunately, if they follow the Europa League, they'll be under a really tough schedule. But squad looks good. Uh, they also have Obama Yang, who didn't hit the, the presses as one of the big acquisitions. But we'll see what he does at 34, trying to get his career going. I wouldn't expect too much. Cheggy Zunder, great, great player. Sara, as I mentioned, is going to be really talented. Uh, Malinovsky, awesome player. I mean, Arit's good player as well. Onuahi, uh, great, played great for Morocco. Um, probably should be on that list alongside Gwenduzi. Uh, Pavke looks like he's suspended for a little while. Uh, I guess until December. Wow, what did he do? Uh, Kondovia coming in is a good defensive stopper, probably could play center back if they need it. Jonathan Klaus, great player. Uh, there's so much talent on this team. Uh, Gigo, definitely a, a big presence at center back. Uh, alongside Chancel and Bemba, I mean, there's so much here. Paulo Lopez looks like he'll probably be the keeper. Um, the Ruben Blanco uh, is brought in. Uh, no, I don't think it'll be a, a challenge too much, but the Sparse team should be good. Um, we'll see because they always should be good at this point. Uh, $13 million higher in the val- market value before we get to PSG is Star Rene. Uh, Ren were a good bet for me. I-, I bet them to finish in the European position last year. They ended up getting Europa League. 
uh, which I think was fourth. So that was an easy win because they could have finished top five. It wasn't as easy throughout the season, but they had a really good run in toward the end of the year. Really bad road team, but great home team. Won a lot at home. That I think was enough. Uh, Bruno Genesio is still around, appointed in 2021. Probably has a little bit of uh, some explaining to do or, or some expectation from this season. Um, they sold Ugo Chukwu to Chelsea uh, from the defensive midfield. That's a loss. Uh, Guasi was already gone to Stuttgart. They kept him. Uh, Loic Bade was gone to Sevilla. Amare Taroe is a big loss. Unfortunately, their captain Traoré was really good for uh, Saint René on the right side, fullback position. But Sociedad did a great grab for him. And Andy Diouf left, uh, I guess, for Basel and then left for someone else uh, in the French league. So uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that one. But bring in Ludovic Blas was huge. Enzo Lefay was huge. Uh, they brought a backup goalkeeper in Gaon from uh, Estactois, might potentially make a, a race for a uh, starting position. And then a lot, not a lot more than that, but it seems like they brought in some money, uh, but still brought in some talent, lost some, but a lot of that was already gone. Uh, Ugo Chukwu seems to be the, the biggest loss. Um, squad that's going to play aggressively on the front foot, don't really want to play unders against them. Uh, or with them, and then it's hard to back them uh, or, or to fade them at, at home. Uh, I think this the place to go against Rene or Sad Ren or Sad Rene or Ren is to an, an English version uh, is is literally when they're a, a road favorite um, and a big road favorite. They should be as the second highest squad value in all of Ligue 1 according to transfer market. There should be a lot of opportunities for that. Uh, and until Martin Terrier comes back, I'm not as scared about them as I probably should be. Uh, he missed a lot of last year. It looks like he's expected end of September. So that's still two months away. We'll see. Um, they've got a ton of talent, of course. Uh, but I question a fair amount about the squad. Um, they do have Teat. Uh, the, Joe Rodon came in from, or Rodin came in from uh, the Spurs on loan. Looks like he's returned. Steven Mandanda, 38 years old. Please do not start him. Alfred Gomis has come back, I believe. Um, goalkeeping does not look very safe to me at the moment. It might be Gautier Galant uh, from Estoc Trois that, that takes over. But Mandanda, every time he plays, I feel like he is 38 years old, should should have hung him up a long time ago. But if if Ren will keep playing, you know, I guess you keep going and, and cashing that check. Um, Teat, Teat should be a lot better at center back this year after losing their first game by himself uh, with an own goal and a ridiculous one at that. But there's good players in this team. Uh, right back is a big question for me at the moment. Um, but is that enough to downgrade a squad that's worth second most in Liga? Probably not, but they're going to have to balance two competitions. That might be hard. And uh, last but not least, PSG, we've moved along. Um, I don't really know what happened with their previous manager, but it is what it is. Um, they are awesome. They're worth a billion dollars. Uh, they have talent all over. Um, no Messi, but like that's not a huge loss. Mbappe is probably moving on, but gosh, who, who knows what to say about that? Um, I, I feel like this is Paris's league to win or league to lose. Basically, it's probably unlikely that they lose it. Um, they are a great team. Of course, uh, Luis Enrique, we'll see how that goes as manager, formerly of the Spanish national team or Barcelona or blah, blah, blah. Uh, they spent a ton of money. They're probably gonna get some back. Brennan got Gonzalo Ramos from Benfica. That's a big signing. He should be pretty good alongside Iacantique as well. Mbappe, I imagine will play for the team, but who knows? Um, Kang and Lee also a big signing from, uh, Mallorca was, was certainly useful, uh, screening are coming in from Inter Milan. I mean, this team is so good. They should kill everyone in this league. Unfortunately, I wish it was not going to be the case, but probably will be, uh, in terms of their losses, Bishabu, uh, I don't think that's a huge one. Dine Bimbe was already gone. Icardi has gone to, to Galatasaray. Uh, Zavi Simmons to uh, Leipzig, but I guess he was already on loan previously anyway, uh, or uh, had been playing at PSV. So like, I don't know. Um, PSG going to be great. And now that we've gone through uh, a long, long time on all the players here or the teams here an hour already, man, I've gone so deep, but I guess it shows how much I like the French Liga. Uh, we've now come to the last part. We'll go over the futures here. Um, odds to win Liga. We got PSG minus 350 which is probably the biggest favorite across the biggest five leagues. I'd imagine uh, Marseille at, at 10 to one odds, Lille 20 to one, Monaco 25 to one, uh, Lons at 28 to one, Rennes 33 to one, Lyon 33 to one, and then Nice 66 to one. And then it gets very, very wide. If it wasn't wide already, 
Um, Marseille have potentially Champions League or Europa League. I uh, don't like that. I would probably want a sky a side uh, to pull off the impossible here to be not facing other European competitions. That's Monaco at 25 to one. Uh, that is a long shot, though, to say the least. Um, though I think I like that one best. Uh, next, I'll move to win Liga without PSG. Marseille two to one odds. These are all courtesy of Bet Online, of course. Uh, Lille five to one. Rennes six to one. Monaco seven to one. That's one that's of interest to me. Um, then I'll keep going to relegation. We have Lachav, who've just been promoted uh, as league champion, league two champions. Uh, league two champions are minus one ten to be relegated. Um, looks like three teams will be relegated. Mets are even money. Brest at plus 185, Clermont Foot plus 250, Lorient plus 275, which is especially challenging considering they're worth a lot and are playing two competitions. Uh, Nolte at three and a half to one, Montpellier at four and a half to one. To lose five to one doesn't seem sh- like a, a huge stretch for me because literally they've lost a lot of talent and they are uh, playing in the Europa League. Uh, I could certainly see that becoming a problem. Manager change, yes, it was on the staff, but uh, that's a scary thing as well. Uh, top three finish PSG minus 5,000. So we'll keep going. Marseille plus 120, Lille two to one, Ren two and a quarter, Monaco plus 240. Um, so those squads all very similar. Uh, I guess Monaco at only plus 240 looks interesting, as well as Lyon plus 275. Um, Lons at three to one with Champions League, Nice six to one. Um, I think Nice are are interesting as an outsider there at six to one because they uh, don't have Europe as well as Monaco plus two forty, though uh, Lyon plus seventy five are in that kind of same boat. I think I trust Monaco more as better home crowd at Lyon than for Monaco, but um, uh, it's, that's I guess all possibilities. Uh, top five finish. So this is a, a, a European position. Uh, Everyone's a, a, a favorite or uh, odds on Marseille. I, they don't list PSG, but Marseille. So that's one Marseille, two Lille, three Rennes, four Monaco, five Lyon, six at minus 125. Um, that's not really going to do it for me. Uh, I think these feel like they're mispriced. Uh, unfortunately, Nice is the only underdog at plus 175. Uh, doesn't really give a lot of options there considering they have six favorites to finish the top five. I feel like that must be a mistake. Uh, yeah, especially because PSG aren't even included. So definitely I'm not going to give out that one because that does not seem right to me. Um, so huh, I guess, you know, it, thank you, of course, for tuning in. It will be ultimate best bet time as soon as I get my stuff together. Um if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please leave a five-star review. It means a lot to get me up the search bar. Uh, more hits, more searches, more listens, the more I do of these. So keep that going. Tell your friends if you could. I really would appreciate that. Subscribe on YouTube. That'd be useful as well. I'm still a million people away from being able to put ads on there. So you don't have to worry about that. You could probably add 550 new people or something like that and still won't get any ads. So uh, if you're watching on YouTube, enjoy yourself. But please share me if you wouldn't mind or hit subscribe so you can see when all these other silly videos are coming out. Um, but hopefully silly in a way that makes us all money. Um, and let's see if you're, if you haven't discovered my Patreon, patreon.com slash surreal underscore G Warner, a uh, very affordable way to interact with me all day across many sports, ask your questions directly. And I'm, I think pretty good at responding to them. You asked my patrons already over there. Um, but it's a very affordable way to get uh, better contact with me and uh, if you're into that sort of thing, I feel like you should check it out. Um, so I think I've come up, I've come up with my live best bet. So this is the real underscore G Warner on Instagram, Twitter, wherever you can find me. Uh, and this is the league uh, betting the pitch episode 214 futures episode. Uh, Going to give an ultimate best bet, but while I'll also mention the uh, promotion code link in the description. Go sign up at Bet Online if you don't have an account already. Uh, we both get a bonus for signing up, so go check that out. Uh, but for this episode 214, betting the pitch, I'm going to go with my best bet as Toulouse, uh, five to one odds to be relegated. Um, I think they have a really tough schedule ahead of them, balancing two competitions. Yes, they have had some big investment from, uh, I think, the Chelsea ownership. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I'm right. 
and they've spent a lot of money on players, and I'm not sure that it's going to mean a lot for uh, the squad. They are a very aggressive team that doesn't play great defense. They're going to be playing in Europa League after winning the Coupe de France, and I think it could be a really tough come down in their second season, sophomore slump, sophomore slump season in league. Uh. And that'll do it for this episode of Betting the Pitch. Thank you for tuning in. I know it's been a long one, but that's how these previews are going. Hopefully they are of value to you. Again, subscribe, hit me up, hit the follow button on Twitter. Um, five-star reviews, all those sort of things will all be really helpful. And uh, I will talk to you all on a uh, match day one, uh, I guess, for this weekend uh, list coming up as my next podcast before we get to Syria A and the Bundesliga uh, coming up next week because uh, those seasons don't start until then. Thanks for, uh, thanks for listening. Always thanks for the support. Hit the follow buttons, and uh, we'll talk to you uh, probably tomorrow.